during the last several months, I have had the opportunity to hear from so many of you who have expressed unwavering support for our church during these unusual times. I could never thank you enough for all your prayers, encouragement, and for your enthusiastic participation in our Sunday evening outside worship services. All along, our six ministers, 18 deacons, and 18 medical ministry team members have been praying and thinking and talking about the most appropriate time and way for us to begin regathering for worship inside our sanctuary with both primary goals in mind, togetherness and safety. We realized that whatever plan we developed would not be safe enough for some people and way too restrictive for others. But our ministers and deacons and medical ministry team are ready to announce a plan that we believe strikes the right balance and achieves both goals of togetherness and safety. And we are appealing to you to put aside your personal preferences for the unity of the church and the common good of the body. And we are praying that you will prayerfully support this plan. But before we present the plan, we thought it would be important for us to present a covenant to which we would all agree, a spiritual foundation and a practical basis for our regathering plan. So, this is the covenant that has been approved by our ministers, deacons, and medical ministry team. And we are praying that this will be your covenant too. Number one, in loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we will make decisions and participate in church life with the primary goal of honoring and pleasing God in all we do and say. Number two, in loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, we will look out not only for our own self-interests, but also for the interests of others. Number three, in making disciples, we will be a loving witness by creating a safe and welcoming place for people to gather and learn more about Jesus. Number four, we will not enter the church facilities if we are exhibiting any signs of illness, particularly symptoms of COVID-19. Number five, Everyone second grade and up will wear masks at all times and stay appropriately distanced whenever we are in the church buildings. Number six, we will follow all instructions with regard to where we enter and exit the buildings and we will use the provided san sanitizing stations to clean our hands upon entering and exiting the buildings. Number seven, we will only use designated restroom facilities when in the building. Number eight, we will remain positive in our conversations regarding all covenant measures, even when they pose an inconvenience to us or require that we give up certain personal freedoms for the good of the body. Number nine, we will expect and trust that our church leadership will prioritize health and safety when approving gatherings and activities in the church buildings. Number 10, we will expect and trust our church leadership to ensure areas are sanitized after use. Number 11, we will expect a church staff person or volunteer to greet any group gathering in the building and remind them of our covenant commitments. Number 12, knowing that there is an inherent risk of exposure to COVID-19 wherever people gather, we will voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure to COVID-19 and not hold the church responsible. We are encouraged to notify a church staff person if we test positive for COVID-19 and have been in direct contact with church members and or staff within the last two weeks. And finally, number 13, we will embrace this covenant in a spirit of love. As we have seen over the last several months, public health conditions may change and can change quickly and cause us to reconsider and or revise our plans to regather. But as of now, 
This is the tentative regathering plan with the covenant as our unifying agreement. The first phase is that now through September 27th, our church will continue to worship each week online through pre-recorded worship videos as we do now and in person each Sunday evening at 6.30 on the grounds of Paris View Baptist Church, 100 Bud Street at the corner of Old Buncombe Road next to Lakeview Middle School. Phase two, beginning September 1st, beginning now, our buildings and grounds will be available for smaller group gatherings, classes, committees, etc., but must be scheduled in advance. These meetings will be limited to the largest rooms in our facilities to ensure social distancing, and all groups will be required to abide by the terms of our regathering covenant. To request approval for your meeting and receive the specifics of our protocol, please contact Denise Plumley or Ellen Hayward. The church office will be reopened during regular office hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then the third phase that we're most excited about is the beginning October 4th, we will be regathering for worship in our sanctuary at 9 and 11 a.m., abiding by the terms of our regathering covenant and observing the Sunday morning protocol that I will describe in just a moment. Initially, there will be no nursery, child care, or children's programs, but we are working to be sure the services will be approximately 45 minutes in length, and activity bags have already been provided for preschoolers and children to keep them occupied. Another crucial thing is that without volunteers and an adequate number of volunteers in place, in place each Sunday morning, our regathering will not be possible. In order to be able to begin regathering on October 4th and continue regathering for worship each Sunday, we will have to have teams of volunteers in place each Sunday morning. We are now in the process of enlisting five new teams of volunteers to assist in our worship services for the time being. We will need outside hosts, inside hosts, sanctuary hosts, overflow hosts, and a cleaning crew. Filling these teams of volunteers will be vital to our regathering plan. So if you're willing and able to serve on any of these teams, or if you just have questions about the various volunteer opportunities, please contact Chuck Emery, Janice Hennett, or Denise Plumley. As soon as you possibly can, we desperately need your help. Another thing that will be different is that we will be requiring reservations because our sanctuary seating capacity will be limited due to social distancing guidelines. And based on what we've heard from you, sanctuary seating will be prioritized based on a reservation system. Reservations to attend the service of your choice, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m may be made each week online or by contacting the church office. And reservations will be made on a first come, first served basis as space allows with an overflow area available. Now the reason we are requiring a reservation is that we do not want you to show up and not get a seat in the sanctuary and then have to watch the service from an overflow area on a screen if you do not want to. Many of you would be fine with that, but we've heard from many others who have said that if they're gonna to have to watch it on a screen in an overflow area, they may as well stay at home and watch the services online like they are doing now. So the reservation system will allow you and it will allow us to anticipate and prepare for the seating arrangement for each worship service each Sunday. And then of course there will be safety precautions. In order to maintain the safest possible environment for an inside gathering, everyone will be required to be socially distant, wear a mask, and use hand sanitizer. Other precautions will also be taken as well, including cleaning and sanitizing our building before, between, and after the worship services, as well as limiting access to restrooms and other areas of our building which will keep us from having to sanitize the entire building after each service. And then finally, we're asking you to just be thankful. Finally, just 
be thankful for the opportunity to be back together in our sanctuary for in-person worship. And please express thanks to our volunteers who will help to make our regathering possible. And remember the verse in Psalm 122.1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The fourth phase of our regathering plan is that during the month of October, our ministerial staff, deacons, and medical ministry team will be evaluating public health conditions and the effectiveness of our regathering covenant and plan, and will update our plan to include even more regularly scheduled programs and activities such as children's programs and Sunday school, Wednesday evening gatherings, discipleship groups, etc. This is a lot of information. It's a lot to take in, so please watch the newsletter and other digital communications for more details and for opportunities to volunteer. I am praying, and I hope you will pray with me, that our church will remain united in our determination to be together and to be safe and to do it all the greater way. I look forward to seeing you soon.